record. All right. Anywho, um, Linda's going to hit record and we're good. Okay. So welcome to tonight's team call. What is it? It's February 5th. My gosh, 2018 already. Um, so Linda asked um, some people to step up and, you know, lead the team call. So I, I gathered some notes. So hopefully this will all make sense. But I wanted to speak to you guys tonight about the laws to success or the laws of success. And I think I have about eight of them. So if you have pen and paper, that's great. If not, you know, no worries. Maybe you could just envision what I want to do in my mind right now. So when you were younger, I want you guys to think about what you dreamed about. Because everybody is a dreamer when we're, when we're young, when we're kids. And we just kind of lose it as we age. So when you were younger, did you just dream of the kind of sports car you wanted? You know, I know for a lot of guys, it's some fast red sports car maybe. Um, or the kind of house you'd live in. Vacations you would take with your friends or either your family. Um, sometimes, you know, females will think about like the clothes or the jewelry they'll have. Uh, maybe you dreamt of being an athlete, a pro athlete, or a famous actor or actress, um, a boat, a vacation home, having your kids in the private school, um, tons of money to do whatever you'd want and be financially free. So picture all that, draw a really large circle around all those dreams that you had, and then put like a little dot right next to it. That little dot represents your income. <laughs> So <laughs> you've got this little dot for your income and a big circle with all those dreams written in it. So after you grew up and you went to school, you started thinking, gosh, it's so expensive to live these days. I'm going to have to scratch some things off my, my dream circle. So you're like, all right, we'll, we'll take the boat off. That's not really practical. And who needs a second home? We don't need a vacation home as long as we have a, a primary uh, you know, and I only get two weeks vacation a year and we're going to have to go visit the family in Wisconsin for one and the other week's going to be spent just doing errands for the wife and cleaning out the garage. So we don't really need those fancy vacations. Who could really afford to go on those vacations anyway? Um, and gosh, who needs the really big house? You know, so what? We have blue carpet and, you know, avocado colored appliances. And I, I know I really dated myself there, um, but we used to have avocado and brown and I think like Harvest Gold appliances. But anywho, moving on. Um, so who cares if you've got that stuff? You know, you raised your kids there and you don't need much space and you don't need the updated appliances. And that's just for, you know, fancy people. And that fast sports car, gosh, do you know what the insurance would cost on that? And I hear it takes premium gas. Let's just cross that off the list too. You know, a Hyundai is just fine. Although I have to say Hondas now, and I own a Hyundai, are not the same as the 1990 Hyundai. <laughs> so they've, they've upped it. But anywho, um, and, and what if you dreamt about helping the disadvantaged, like volunteering most of your time, helping other people, but you can hardly pay the rent for yourself so or your student loans, and that's just not practical. So slowly, each dream just came off of our list, out of that circle, because our income circle never really got that big. All right, so maybe it's a, it was a dot when we started dreaming, and it got a little bit bigger, but it's still never enough to cover all of those dreams. So we got practical. We told ourselves we got practical and we got realistic. And we slowly became like 98% of the population and we stopped dreaming. It wasn't reality and we just needed to play it safe. So somewhere while growing up, we just settled for mediocrity. Now the Bible says a man without a vision shall perish not might perish, not probably will perish, but shall perish. Perish is a pretty harsh word. Like when you think about it, like perish, like, like, right? Like perish, gone. <laughs> so if the Bible says you need a vision, we need a vision. So where do you start? Most people don't have a vision and yet we complain about everything we have and don't have. So as a side note, also when I say vision, I don't mean just for your, your business or your finances. I mean, for every area of your life, spiritually, where do you want to be in your relationship with the Lord, if, if that's your thing? Marriage, your relationship, you need to have a marital vision. Most people will plan for at least a year or two for the big day, the wedding day, but they don't take any planning into the next 30, 40 years when things get tough, right? So you need a marriage vision, um, a family vision, how you want your kids to 
be raised. So you need visions for every area of your life, personal development, self-growth, your, your physical health. What's your vision for your physical health? Do you want to be at whatever goal weight? Do you want to be able to still do push-ups and sit-ups when you're 60? Um, so you need a vision for every area of your life. <clears throat> All right. Nothing becomes dynamic until it becomes specific. So I'm going to say that again. Nothing becomes dynamic until it becomes specific. So write this stuff down. Not now, but this is your homework for at some point. You need to write down what you want. You need to see it in your mind before it's your reality. You need to see it in your mind. It's going to speak. It's going to come out of your mouth before it's a reality. That's where it starts. Don't allow your bank balance to determine how big or how small you're going to dream. We're, that's, we're not going to worry about that now. So see it first. Think about it. Stay focused on it. Gosh, once you do it, and this goes back to doing your, your dream boards and your vision boards in the beginning of the year. Heck, if you haven't done it, you still could. No, you know, no rule says if you didn't do it by January 31st, you're done. Do it now. Tape it to your bathroom mirror. Hang it up somewhere in your house where you can see it. Make it your screensaver. All right, number two, law of the mind. So I'm going to speak a lot about 98% of the population versus 2%. 98% of the population, sounds a little harsh, is either dead or dead broke by the age of 65. <laughs> Only 2% do really well financially. But what's the difference? It's not the school they went to. It's not the family they were born into. It's not the degrees they have or who they know. It's not even their race or or the geographic location either. It's the way they think. Um, so if you think like a 98 percenter, you're going to get what 98 percent have. If you want something different, you need to do something different from what everybody else is doing. So it's not our circumstances. It's what you do with your circumstances. Every time you hit a roadblock, thinking you need to think, well, how can I make it work? How can I go over, around, through, under it? Where 98 percent of the people will say, oh, Forget it. I can't do it. There you go. I told you. I told you it wasn't going to work. Um, you know, they're going to blame the economy. They're going to, they won't take a risk on starting a business. 98% will look for an excuse to quit and they're quick to blame other people. They'll watch an excess amount of TV and they don't work on themselves. So be like 2% of the population. Work on yourself. Work more on yourself than anything else. Look for solutions. Don't make excuses. Excuses are well-planned lies. I need to tell myself that many times because I, I try and convince myself, it's not a well-planned lie. It's legit. I really can't do this. Blah, blah. No, we've just convinced ourselves into, into making excuses and thinking that it won't work. We need to think like 2% out of the box. How can we make it work? All right. Number three, law of value. So who makes more money, the general practitioner or the brain surgeon? Brain surgeon, right? Because he's or she is specialized. They went longer in schooling. They spent more time. More skills are under their belt. So because they invested more time, more school and education, they get paid more. Now, generally, that's generally speaking. So the point is the more you invest in yourself with developing your skill set, the more money you will make. Increasing your skill set usually increases your pay. So for us, it's personal development, it's, it's trainings, it's being on these calls. So you guys are awesome. I'm preaching to the choir here, right? Um, it's um, perfecting or increasing, improving your professional skills, your people skills. My gosh, everything comes from people. Money, opportunities, referrals, right? Everything comes from people. Work on your people skills. Okay, you need to know how to relate to people. There's some really good books out there. Um, I want, it skips my mind now. If I remember, I'll, I'll say it later. But there's a lot of good books on there. And leadership skills. So work harder on yourself than anything else, and you will be unusually successful. Each of us can be increasing our skill set daily, whether that's inviting, follow-up, edifying our connects, whatever it is, just work on your skill sets. Four, uh, the law of sowing and reaping. So if you guys plant corn, what are you going to get? You sh I should make this like interactive. Corn. If you plant corn, you're going to get corn, right? Uh, but what if you're a really, really shy farmer? If you're like really, really shy and you plant corn, what are you going to get? You're still going to get corn, right? Okay. So we've been taught this lie that you need to be lucky or you need to be at the right place at the right time 
You need to be the right color, the right ethnicity, the right neighborhood, the right blah, 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 blah. 98% is think that if you plant corn, you'll get strawberries. Like, no, 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 no. And, and those are the people that will blame the government. They'll blame the ex-spouse. They'll blame the kids for holding them back. They'll blame the job, their boss. Um, they think that if they do the bare minimum, the world owes them. It's, it's kind of like a lottery mentality. They want to do bare minimum, but like hit it big. Um, so when you plant corn and blame somebody else for not getting strawberries, take responsibility. <laughs> We can all plant corn. You're going to get corn. If you plant corn, you get corn. So where you are now is the sum of all your past decisions. So if you're not happy with your finances, with your relationships even, with your bank deposit, um, with the growth in your business, it's because of every past decision you've made up until now. But the good news is you can change it. Where you want to be in five years from now, just change your decisions going forward from today on. So... Sowing and reaping um, with your thoughts, even. If you complain about your lack of money or your relationships, or, oh, my business is not growing and I can't attract leaders, and, oh, my people aren't doing anything, well, you're, now you're speaking death over your whole situation, and that's a whole other topic. <laughs> but get those thoughts aligned. So even sowing with your thoughts. Um, what you feed will flourish. What you neglect will die. So focus on gratitude, focus on the little sprouts, focus on the little accomplishments. You know, you signed a person up and they only got 50 PV, celebrate it. That's awesome. Um, don't speak death over that situation. So focus on the good, speak life into all areas of your life. If you want more encouragement of your life, you're like, oh gosh, nobody encourages me. Well, you know what? Be an encourager. If you want referrals, give referrals. You have to give what you want. If you want people to like and comment on your posts, like I hear people saying, I post all these things on Facebook and nobody likes and comments. Well, are you liking and commenting on everybody else's? More often, probably not. Um, so do what you want. If you plant a seed, you're going to reap a harvest. And number five, law of desire. So let's think back to when you were young, like, and what maybe some things were told to you. And out of love, I'm not saying that, you know, your parents were horrible, but out of love, like it could have stifled your success and put some limiting beliefs on you. Um, I'm not saying your parents would have said you're not good enough, but, you know, people we met maybe in the school system, a, a teacher who just didn't believe you. Um, this is one thing that I could say parents do sometimes out of a loving place but they say, don't get your hopes up. So if you've heard, don't get your hopes up your whole life, and that's coming from a place of love from your parents because they don't want you disappointed, that's placed a limiting belief on you as an adult. What about money doesn't grow on trees? That's another limiting belief, right? It's like a scarcity mindset. Um, when are you going to find a real job? <laughs> so we all have gifts. We're all born with persistence enthusiasm, a sense of adventure, and the ability to get over it. And if you think I'm lying, who has ever seen a three-year-old ask for something? Okay, we all have kids, right? They want a cookie. You say no, what are they going to ask for? A cookie. Okay, and she's got her daughter on her lap. She can probably get on this call too and verify what I'm saying. Yes. Um, kids don't give up. They're persistent. Um, enthusiasm. My gosh, it's an enthusiastic bunch. Um, what else? Where was I? Sense of adventure. Kids are adventurous for the most part. The ability to get over it. When, you're, when your toddler is learning how to walk and they fall down and they hurt themselves and they got this big goose egg on their head, do they say, that's it? I knew it. I'm never doing this again. In fact, I'm going to sue the table because I fell into the table and I'm never trying to walk again. No. They get up and they do it again. Darn it because they have the ability to just get over it. So where did we lose that all? Right? Where did we, where did we lose it? So we've, we've got to go back. We were all giving those gifts. Um, where was I? I just, hold on, page 38. Okay, so persistence, I went over that. Uh, faith. We were all given also the gift of faith. If you don't believe that, think back to when you were young and you put cookies and milk under the Christmas tree because you knew 
Oh, Angie. <laughs> okay. She's got her daughter there. You guys know where I'm going with this, okay? So I'm going to be careful what I elaborate on that one. It's okay. We don't worry. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Wasn't sure. So, you know, kids have this faith of whatever you tell them. Um, and we've lost faith as we've gotten older, too. All right. Number six, the law of teachability. Find Success leaves clues. Find who has what you want. Ask them how they did it. That goes for a successful business. That goes for a successful relationship. That goes for great kids you think have really good morals. You're like, wow, can you give me some parenting tips? Success leaves clues. Be humble. Be teachable. Always be teachable. An unteachable person will say, I already know that. So humble yourself and ask for help. Ego will keep you broke. Ego will say, I'd never do that. What would my friends think? And ego comes in many different forms. And just briefly, I'm going to say a few forms. Shyness is actually a form of ego. And gosh, when I first heard this, I was like, that's BS. It's just a personality trait. Um, but I was taught shyness is a, is, a, is a sign of ego because you're worried, you're using your personality as an excuse. You're worried more about yourself and how you, how you come across rather than what the other person needs. Um, anyway, so the righteous are bold as a lion, right? So we need to be, to be bold. All right. So oh, also comfort ego so where you're like, well, you know, it's not really what I wanted, but it's okay. I'm going to be grateful for what I have. And I listen, being grateful for what you have is not what I'm talking about. You always be grateful for what you have, no matter what, no matter how little, no matter how limited, but it doesn't mean that you die in that comfort zone. We were built for more. We were made for more. So don't die in the comfort zone. Weigh your ego with your bank account. All right. Law of forgiveness. This is a big one. And you're like, what the heck does this have to do with business and helping me be successful? Well, who do you need to forgive? Because if you're holding on to unforgiveness, that's bitterness. And that's going to rob you of your creativity and your productivity. So it's for the sake of your own freedom and restoration. So forgiveness is huge. And that just, it frees you up, guys. It, it just allows you to just move forward in all areas of your life. Number eight, law of promotion. So you might have heard, you know, prosper where you planted. And this relates back to the law of promotion. Recently, and this just pretty much was, I got convicted of it last week. If you know a little bit about me, um, I raise my kids. They're, my youngest is going to be 21. They're all gone, although they bounce back occasionally. My 23-year-old 23, 23 daughter is with me with her daughter, my granddaughter. Um, and then my 83-year-old father came to live with me about a year and a half ago. So I was at the point in my life like, yes, I was a stay-at-home mom. Basically, I, I did my time. I didn't look. No regrets. Loved it. I'd do it all over again. But I was looking forward to the new season in my life where I can get out there and I can just go do whatever I want. And suddenly I've got my three-year-old granddaughter to raise. Okay, she's going to get older. Things are going to get easier. Then I get my father. Things are not going to get easier as the years go on. Things are going to get harder. So I started to get really bitter. And I'm just like being totally transparent and honest with you guys. And I kept thinking, what the heck? Like, does God think I'm like this badass caregiver that like, I'm just stuck in this role. Like I can't go do what I want now. Um, and it was showing, like it was showing in my, you know, like the way I prepared meals, the way I did laundry. It was just like, uh, I wasn't going through the motions. Um, I don't, I don't know what the word is, but I think hopefully you know what I'm trying to say. Um, with a smile on my face with, Oh gosh, this is great. Um, because I was, so, I was really bitter that I just couldn't work 100% on every other area that I wanted to work in. And then I got convicted last week. I was like, prosper where you're planted. You know, <laughs> sometimes I'm so dense. Like these things just come to me. I'm like, what? I missed that, you know? So no, I need to prosper where you're planted, guys. If you've given little, you know, take care of the little. You'll never be ruler over much if you don't take care of, you know, the little. Um, so be faithful with that little, um, if you can't manage a thousand dollars, like if you just overspend a thousand dollars, what makes you think God's going to grant you $10,000 in income if you can't manage a thousand? So be faithful with what you have. And 
relating to my experience with my family, the blessings where you, where I reap, right? If I'm sowing into my family, I'm sowing into my family. You might reap blessings in another area of your life. So it's not necessarily where you sow that you'll reap. Um, so I personally need to be more diligent in, in being a daughter, in being a grandmother, wife, in all areas of my life. Um, so I'm getting back on track with that. All right, so where was I? Okay, another example. If you've got a car and it's like, you need another car and it's like 10, 20, you know, 15 years old and it's, it's on its last leg and oh gosh, you need another car, but you know what? You haven't washed it in the back seat. looks like you've lived out of it and there's like empty um, McDonald's bags. Not that any of us eats McDonald's, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, you've got like wrappers and I don't know, maybe empty, go empty goyen bottles. Let's go with that. The back seat is littered with empty pure products. Okay. Not McDonald's, empty pure products. And you haven't washed it and you don't take care of it. And you're like, I'm not taking care of this old piece of junk. I, it's, I need a new car anyway. Faithful with the little law of promotion, love, honor, take care of what you have. If you, if you got a house and it's only like a thousand square feet and you need 2,000 square feet, and you've outgrown it. So I, I'm not going to clean it. I'm not going to paint the walls. I'm not fixing that. No, 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 no. Do that. <laughs> Law of promotion. If you're in a job and you can't stand your position, you, you think you, you need the higher promotion, and you're like, well, I'm just going to do the bare minimum until I get my promotion. No, 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 no. <laughs> Become an employpreneur. I love that word. Um, so treat your, um, or don't be like the 98%. Don't do the minimum required by your job description. Don't say if I made more, I do more, or if I was appreciated more, I do more. No, it starts with you. Give first. You won't get promoted to the next position until you assume in your mind that you already have it and act like it. Um, so that's it. So sometimes when we sow into one area of our lives and being faithful for what we have been dealt with, even though it's not what you planned, um, the blessings will come in another area of our life. So that real quick, I think I did it in like 24 minutes, was our eight laws of success. Hopefully that made sense. Um, and that's about it. Any questions? Linda, like we can't hear Linda. <laughs> okay. okay well, Mary's not listening to her. Okay. <laughs> Should I raise my hand or just hit unmute? Just talk, Angie. We okay. got you. What? I missed my numbering. Number five was law of desire. Number six. What was number six? Uh, hold on. Let me cancel. Six law of, no, six law of teachability. Ah, yep. I don't think Linda can, can we hear Linda or no? Is she still like no audio, no audio capable? I don't know what the heck's up with that. All right. So, um, That's really good, Fran. Oh, good. Yeah. Appreciate Glad you that. liked it. I, I, hey, that content wasn't from me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you did good presenting it. I, I didn't write it. <laughs> I just need to good, be more, you did I just good presenting it. I'm reminded so. of it constantly. <laughs> Hey, uh, question. Do you have a copy of Beach Money? Rob um, wants to read it, and I think I left mine in Las Vegas. <laughs> so I, I literally had it for, all, you know, one day, I think, oh, no, or two days. I, I, I did finish it, but I think I left it in the hotel room. Okay. So. Well, hopefully you just blessed somebody with it. And, um, yeah, right? <laughs> So I don't know. Do you have a copy of that by any chance? I, yeah, I'm sure I do. I own everything. Okay. <laughs> I think I have, and let me just make sure it's not digital. I think I have the hard book of that. Okay. And I can always bring it to church. I, read, I met Rob. For yeah, you told me. Yeah. Sunday, yeah. yeah. I was like, I never met you before in person. I never met you, Jason, too. I was like, I never right. met you live either. <laughs> right. Well, what service do you go to? 8.30. Gotcha. We're sometimes in there, so... Either that or the eleven thirty. So, One of these days. Yeah. Do so you guys have any questions, or we can wrap it up? Silence.
Well, right. I will just say that you confirmed everything God's been showing me lately about being content where I'm at. And I, like when I get, go do the laundry and what I think I need to do around the house, like you said, just going through the motions and not even smiling about it. Like God's like, why are you just enjoying where you're at? Like quit fighting. Rachel mm -hmm. had something she said right after Christmas, maybe it was the 26th or the right before New Year, she said to embrace the struggle. And it's like, just embrace the struggle and have fun and you'll get to the pure stuff. You'll like, I am in training mode. Like I, I saw her post today, make one call a day. I'm like, I can make one call a day. Mm -hmm. I, I want to get up to five calls a day. I want to get up to 20 calls a day. But at the moment I, I want to enjoy not being depressed, enjoy thinking clearly with my pure products and just quit complaining about all that is to be done, you know, and just get it done and be appreciative. Like you just said some stuff. I won't say it again so we can all go to bed or go on with our night, but everything you said was resonating and exactly what God has been showing me. So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. I was telling Linda last week, I was like, I was like really bummed out when I was like, Oh gosh, I better get my act together at home before I think I'm going to have pure success. <laughs> I need, I need Rivera success. <laughs> <laughs> first right <laughs> all right guys yes okay you guys rock thank you for all getting on the call tonight and um we will see you in the group and don't forget tomorrow night's rachel's call at 8 30 all right we'll see you good night guys bye